a liberal resistance fermenting in Atlanta's conservative suburbs. The special election in Georgia's sixth congressional district should have been a shoo-in for a Republican candidate. Instead, this is the candidate right here. John Ossoff is an unlikely contender to replace Tom Price, Trump's health secretary. This is a district that's been Republican since 1979, and Ossoff is a 30-year-old documentary maker and a Democrat. He's fundraised millions online from liberals across America. I couldn't be prouder to be doing this for you. And prompted local Democrats to emerge from the closet. Have you ever done this kind of thing before? No. This is my first time participating in anything like this. You're kidding me? No. How much did you campaign in the presidential election? None. These suburbs may be Republican, but they're also affluent and educated. Far from classic Trump country. I met with Dick Williams, the conservative editor of a local newspaper, for the inside story. It starts with the disquiet with Trump. The Democrats saw an opportunity. A young man named John Ossoff, he said, you know what, if I could raise enough money, I could do this. How significant is it that through Democratic and liberal groups he's managed to raise $8 million? It's unfathomable. Look, I live in the district, so I've saved all my mail. Mm -hmm. This is about 40 pieces of mail, mm. an average of two a day. Half are Ossoffs. If you figure that each of these flyers to reach the whole district probably costs about $20,000. John Ossoff. Vote for John Ossoff. John Ossoff. There you go. We just violated a whole bunch of stereotypes. The guy in the pickup truck should be a Trump voter. He should be a Georgia conservative. Therefore, he should be for Trump. But this guy in the pickup was for John Ossoff. So what's so going on? It, it's all turning upside down. That's why it's the most fascinating race I've ever been privileged to cover in 40 years. It's just fascinating. I grew up here. Ossoff's millions have allowed him to blanket the airwaves with slick TV ads. I'm John Ossoff, and I approve this message. John Ossoff, not honest, not serious. Republican PACs are retaliating with their own ads, digging up embarrassing footage from Ossoff's college days. I'm Han Solo, captain of the Millennium Falcon. John Ossoff, bad for Georgia, and really sucks at impressions. The Fulton County Republican Breakfast. The sort of event where Republicans would expect to decide who's next in line for such a conservative seat. But not this year. John Ossoff's campaign, uh, they're not lying about the support that they have. Uh, they have about 300 paid canvassers out there doing the work that we all have to do ourselves. It's never been more important that you go out and vote and never been more important that you get other people to go out and vote. Thank you very much. Why is everyone talking about the Democrat in the race? Because we've never had to combat that before. For the first time, we're going to have to get out there and really, really hump it to get the job done. Did you think that you were going to be trailing a Democrat who has over 40% of the vote in polls? No, of course not. Nobody did. Good afternoon, everybody. One reason Republican candidates are in trouble is that there are so many of them, they're splitting the conservative vote. Of the 18 candidates in the race, 12 are Republican. The Republican list is so long that it includes a historic first, a Muslim candidate. I'm Muhammad Ali, the lightweight. And if I'm elected, I'll fight like heavyweight in Washington, D.C. Muhammad Ali invited me to join him on the campaign trail. It's anybody's race. You think you've got a chance? Absolutely, yes. Otherwise, you know, I won't be doing this. But do you think that running is Muhammad Ali is the first Muslim Republican to run for Congress, helps you or hinders you? I mean, uh, I don't think it, it matters one way or the other. You don't think you've got a bigger hurdle to climb being a Muslim candidate? No. Not in the current era, in the current mood no. of Islamophobia? Abs absolutely and Absolutely not. It gives me a better reason to run. People need to see that I'm as American as anybody else. I'm going to do a quick run through important figures and I want you to give me your rating of them a 10 out of 10. Okay. Lincoln. 10. George Bush Jr. 7. Hillary Clinton. 5. Donald Trump. 5. 
John Ossoff, zero. It's easy to see why Republicans don't like Ossoff. He's a political newcomer accused of embellishing his resume. Bankrolled by progressives, but running a centrist campaign. There we go, okay. He's found himself in the right place at the right time. There's two things that occur to me about this event. The first thing is that where were these people during the presidential election? The second thing, a lot of women here. Let's get going. This female army will be crucial if Ossoff is going to secure the more than 50% of votes he needs to avoid a second round runoff against the leading Republican. Very yeah, nice to meet, you. to meet you. We actually don't work for the campaign. We're with a grassroots group called Pave It Blue. Um, heard of that? Yes. It's Can Metro it? Women. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Sign me up. Fantastic. Yes. There's nothing that we want to say no to right now. This is almost too good to be true. You haven't been paid by these guys or anything. Oh this isn't gosh, a setup no. or anything. That's so infuriating. <laughs> That's one of the things that just makes me want to, I don't know, just scream from the mountaintops. Would you call this the Donald Trump effect? Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's no question, right? You know, the policies, the appointments, the executive orders, I mean, it just feels like a crazy train out of control. And it is exhausting. It is. Bye, guys. Trump's presidency may be exhausting, but it's also revitalizing left-wing politics. And done. All right. <laughs> So it's an all-woman organization. It started less than a month ago. And how many people, in addition to you three, do you have? 1,200. So, 1,200? Yeah. Why is there so much more enthusiasm for this young male candidate mm -hmm. than there was for a female presidential candidate? He's fresh. He's new. He's not jaded. Um, there are no stories to talk about about him. He's yeah. our hope. Do you think that it's easier to run if you're a politician as a man? And that's yes. very unfortunate and sad about I, America. I do believe yes. that. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I, I hate that, that that answer is true, but yes. Yeah. I wanted to know if Ossoff was taking all this good fortune in his stride. I hitched a ride to find out. Surprised or Surprised. not? Surprised. It's been a whirlwind. And it's taken on a life of its own. Are you pretty much the only Democrat in the country who's happy that Trump's been elected? Well, I, I wouldn't have run um, if uh, there had been another outcome in the presidential race. I guess to put the question in a slightly different way is, do you feel fortunate to be the beneficiary of this moment in that, you know, it seems like you are effectively a, a lightning rod for a huge amount of pent up frustration among Democrats across the country, right? I wouldn't put it that way. Uh, what I feel is um, this grassroots phenomenon that's developed here in Georgia right now isn't about me. It's about the times that we're living in and the kind of community that we are here. And you say regardless here, of the outcome, one, one important thing, you say here in Georgia right now, but 95% of your donations come not just from outside of the district, but outside of Georgia. These are people in California or New York or wherever. Well, I say be. here in Georgia right now because, for example, um, a lot more Georgians have chipped in to my congressional campaign than to any of the other campaigns right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nearly 200,000 people mm. who have given an average of $42. So much is becoming devoid of policy and substance, and it's becoming about viral social media internet phenomena. Do you think you are one of these internet phenomena? No, in fact, I think that um, uh, my team and I are running an unusually substantive campaign. Uh, there's been more than $5 million spent by dark money, unaccountable super PACs based in Washington uh, attacking me on the airwaves here. And nevertheless, I'm still talking about how to grow the local economy, how to prioritize biotech, medical research, high-tech research, how to expand access to export markets. Those are substantive economic proposals that will benefit the community here. Some of your critics say that you're very cautious and overly measured and deliberative in the way that you talk, like a classic politician. That's the reality of running for office in America these days. You have to both say what you mean and what you feel, and make sure that you don't offer up uh, red meat for the army of opposition researchers to package into an attack at. It's unfortunate that that's what it's come to. Um, Sounds but tedious. You're going to have to be concentrating all the time. I don't know if it's tedious, but it does require concentration. <laughs> and where are we going to now? Uh, you guys are going to a... Uh, concert, I believe. 
Is that right? And I'll be joining you That's about right. 20 minutes later. A, a musical concert? Yeah. Don't dance. <laughs> First rule of politics. You can be as careful as you want about what you say, just don't dance. And I should come, you know, I, I think it's interesting that um, In the end, there was no Ossoff dancing at the party. But others were feeling the groove. Democratic celebrations may seem premature, but I do feel that something in these Atlanta suburbs has changed. Trump's unexpected victory ignited a resistance, and his presidency is fueling it. <laughs>